Christine, doesn't it? Take your bulletin, if you would, please, as a place for you to write some notes uh, from the... Uh, from the sermon today. Are we online already? Okay. Those of you watching at home, thank you for being here. Bless your heart. We want to also announce that we have church live and we'd like to see you here as well. Uh, but if you can't make it, we understand that, but we welcome those who are coming from who knows where. We have people watching all the way from Wenatchee. All right. Matthew chapter number three. The title of this sermon this morning is The Power of a Father's Voice. Would you look with me at Matthew chapter number 3? I want us to look at verses 16 and 17. This is the baptism of the Lord Jesus Christ. Look at verse 13. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, Oh, I have need to be baptized of thee, and thou comest to me? And Jesus answered and said unto him, Suffer it to be so, allow it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him, and it means allowed. And Jesus, here's our text, And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. Take notice of something. This is a Trinitarian uh, effort. Jesus was baptized, the Holy Spirit came like a dove, and we hear the voice of the Father. The Father's voice is integral part of the ministry of Jesus. On several different occasions, we heard Jesus speaking, and then we heard validation from the Father in heaven. So the Father's voice was an integral part of the ministry of the Lord Jesus. Our earthly Father's voice plays a strong influence in our lives as well. Many of us would give anything to hear our Father's voice again. I would love... I can't do it, obviously, but I would love to hear my father's voice. I would love for him to call my name. And you think my name is John. That is my name. But he always called me Jacob. I don't know why. I said, Jacob, come here. And uh, I, I, I would love to hear his voice one more time. Now, I'm going to show you a little picture here. And... Uh, uh, we're going to take notice. Now, this is not my father. This is not my father. We didn't have time to, I was going to put, being Father's Day, I was going to put a picture of my father, but we didn't have time to put that all together. But this is my grandfather. This gentleman here is Dick Sturk. And you can tell by looking at him that I'm a spitting image of my other grandfather, Dick Ozinga. Okay, we'll show his picture someday. But this, this, is, my, this is my grandfather, Dick Sturt. Born in Holland, uh, came here in 1907 and so forth. Died in 1975, he was 75 years old. And you can tell, he had a little bit of a serious look on his face. And uh, I always enjoyed him because he always wanted to, he always wanted to intellectualize. He always wanted to discuss something. And I would give anything to be able to hear his voice again. He didn't call me John either. He called me Jan. Now, uh, which is Dutch for John. Now, I have another grandfather, obviously, and uh, uh, we'll show his picture on another occasion. And I can remember way back when I was just a kid in Chicago, and uh, my, grand my parents would be out shopping or something. They'd drop us off at, at my grandparents' house. And uh, it, to me, my friends, it was like it was yesterday. I can picture that old house there on the south side of Chicago, 100, 111th Street, 246 West, 
111th Street. I've Googled it. The building is still standing. It's all boarded up now, but that's where they lived. And we would, we would uh, be there in the evening, and, and uh, uh, back there it rains quite a bit. There was an empty lot with cottonwood trees. And if you've ever uh, been around cottonwood trees when it rains, they put out a smell. It's, it's not obnoxious, but, it, but it, it's, it can be pretty strong. And I can picture like it was last night, me and my grandpa Ozinga, the one I look like, sitting on the couch. Grandma was sickly. She'd laying on the couch. And uh, some of you young people won't identify with this. Somebody this age, like right, Trinity, she wouldn't have the slightest idea. When you wanted to change the channel, you had to get up. You had to go to the TV and go like this. Anybody remember those days? Okay. You don't remember those days? You do? Okay. Is that right? All right. But we'd sit there and I'd sit on the, on the floor with Grandpa. And we would watch a Lawrence Abalka. And any time we had to watch what Grandma wanted to watch, any time the commercial would, no, not the commercial, any time Joe Feeney, remember that high tenor guy? Any time he'd come on, my grandma would say, Yanni, go over there and change the channel. Oh, she couldn't stand that guy. But my grandpa would slap me on the leg. And if he said it once, he said it a hundred times. Jan correct the root expect. That's Dutch. Jan, correct. Crazy. The root expect means he won't eat his bacon. Bacon in Dutch is speck, S-P-E-K. John's crazy, he won't eat his bacon. Now how did my grandpa know that I would be one of those Christians who would adopt one of those anti-swine flesh uh, agendas? But you don't want to hear about it, so we'll move on. <laughs> but my other grandpa, I, I, I favor him a lot. I do not look like this gentleman much at all. Now, let's get into the heart of the sermon. I want to talk today about the power of a father's voice. We're going to draw some parallels between the fathers in heaven's voice and our, fa our earthly father's voice. Let's get into it this morning. First of all, the power of a father's voice. A, power's, uh, a father's voice directs you. Directs you. Turn to John, the Gospel of John, chapter number 20. John chapter number 20. Now, if you remember when you were growing up or you remember as a father, one of the things that you do is you direct things and many times you do that with your voice. Okay? As I said earlier, I imagine every person here today, if you have a father that's moved on or gone to be with the Lord, you would do just about anything to hear his voice again. You would give just about anything to sit and talk with them for a few moments. I would love to talk to my grandfather about where we are in this world today. Oh, he always wanted to talk about that. He saw things, everything from horse and buggy to man on the moon. And he was fascinated with that. And I would love to hear his voice. But number one, a father's voice directs you. Notice chapter 20 of John and verse 21. Then said Jesus to them, Peace be unto you, as my Father hath sent me, so send I you. Jesus said, I will make it clear to you, the Father sent me. My Father sent me. The voice of a father it gives direction. Gives direction. Now notice it also says, so send I you. There comes that line of authority. There comes that line of direction. Men, dads, your voice can give direction in your children's life. Grandpa, the papa, the same thing is true of you. Your voice can give direction in your child's life. Number two, a father's voice respects you. 
Turn with me to 2 Peter, toward the end of the New Testament there. You'll find a short book called 2 Peter. 2 Peter chapter 1. Here is a reference to the baptism of the Lord Jesus Christ, but Peter is describing it here in 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 17, for he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from ex the excellent glory. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. The voice of the Father showed respect to the Son. A Father's voice can respect you. Respect means to communicate worth and value. Fathers, grandfathers, I encourage you today to show respect to your children and your grandchildren through your voice. In other words, you be the one that says they are wonderful, they are great. Correct them if they might be wrong, but respect them and build them up and tell them and encourage them to show respect for who they are and show respect for the man that they see in the mirror. Oh, not to worship that man in the mirror but to have a high regard for that man in the mirror because that man that they see in the mirror is made in the image of God and has been made, if they're Christian, have been made in the very image of Jesus Christ. By the way, respect is a missing ingredient in our culture today. A lot of what we are experiencing is a lack of respect when I was a young person, I was always told to respect my elders. Always. Always. Young people here today, take the challenge. Show respect to your elders. They've been down the road a long time. They know an awful lot. And respect them. And when you respect them, they're probably going to respect you and help you get down the road a little further. Let's go to number three. A father's voice corrects you. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 6 does not give us a direct reference to a voice, but we're very familiar with it, and this is what a lot of what dads do. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. We're talking here about correction. We're talking here about the Father's voice that says, no, no, that's not it. That's not the way you do it. That's wrong. Do it right. The Father's voice corrects you. Every person here today You'll think back to your childhood or think back to a long way or a short way, whatever it might be. You will know that part of your father's voice came as correction. As correction. As saying, no, 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 not that path, this path. No, 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 not that path, this path. Fathers today, use your voice not only to discipline your children, but to guide your children. Number four, a father's voice protects you. Turn back, if you would, please, to the Gospel of Matthew very quickly. Matthew chapter number 26. Matthew chapter 26. Look at verse 51. Here Jesus is being betrayed. Verse 51, And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Then said Jesus unto him, Put up again thy sword into its place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my father? 
And he shall pre presently give me more than 12 legions of angels. What is he saying here? Jesus is saying, don't you realize that I could call out to my father and he would protect me with 12 legions of angels. How big is a legion? 10,000. This is a huge number. This would be 120,000 angels. Jesus said, I could call that in a moment. Now, take, a no take notice here. He struck off the servant of the high, uh, the, struck off his ear. Do you think he was aiming for his ear? <laughs> I don't think so. He was aiming for his head. And when the guy ducked, it still took his ear off. Now, what is Jesus saying here? Jesus saying, hey, wait a minute, stop this. Stop this. All this that happens to me is going to happen to me because it's, because it's necessary for it to happen to me because I'm going to make my way to the cross. And my, father's, my father could protect me just with the power of his voice and could call 120,000 angels. When I was just a kid, we were in church at Calvary Baptist Church, Highland, Indiana, and we met a fellow who preached at our church and sang at our church. This was the man who wrote the words and the music to that song. He could have called 10,000 angels to destroy the world and set him free. But he died alone for you and for me. Here's the lesson Dad, use your voice to instill a sense of protection in your child's life. Instill within your children or your grandchildren a sense of protection just because of your voice. Let's go to number five. A father's voice perfects you. Now, Philippians chapter 1, we're going to see a text here that does not directly mention a voice, but it does give the concept nonetheless. Philippians chapter number 1. Philippians chapter number 1 and verse 6. I love this text. I love this text. It's a simple verse, but it is there's so much theology here, so much doctrine here. It is unbelievable. Being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now we look at that and we say, that teaches eternal security, and it does. If God has begun that work in you, he will save you and keep you saved. It's not up to you to get saved. It's not up to you to keep yourself saved. Why? Because if it was up to you to get saved, you never would. And if even if you did, if it was up to you to keep it, you never would. Never. Oh, we go through life rumbling, bumbling, fumbling, stumbling, and if it were us to keep our salvation, so look at this verse, being confident of this very thing, he will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. We use that to prove that doctrine of eternal security. But there's more. And don't gloss over it without getting it. Notice, he which hath begun a good work in you. Oh, don't skip that part. This good work that's transpiring in my life, justification, sanctification, glorification, did I initiate this? The answer is no. He started it and he will finish it. Praise God. He began that work. You don't need to do it, but don't grab the hymnal. I'll show you this hymnal. About 15, 20 years ago, we needed new hymnals. 
Oh, we looked at a half a dozen of them and so forth, and then we decided on this one. This one is called Songs and Hymns of Revival. Several reasons we liked it. Number one, the pages were pure white, and they're easy to see, and the words are pretty big, you know, and so forth. But what cinched it for me, what cinched it for me, as I'm looking through this book and so forth, and, and I, I came across the very last song, 551. It's a song written by a fellow named Squire Parsons. Now, he's from the South, so it's usually called Squar. But it's Squire Parsons. And this is what cinched the deal for me. The last song in the book... He came to me. Ah, listen to some of these words. The gulf that separated me from Christ my Lord was so vast, the crossing I could never ford. From where I was to his demand, it seemed so far. I cried, dear Lord, I cannot come to you to where you are. And then the verse says, he came to me. When I could not come to where he was, he came to me. That's why he died on Calvary. When I could not come to where he was, he came to me. Hallelujah. That's good stuff. That's good stuff. Jesus said, I have come to seek and to save that which was lost. You'll not hear Jesus talking about all of this and all of this about me, 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 you, 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 you. No. What you hear Jesus saying is, I've come to seek and to save. Now, let's go back to Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. Being confident of this very thing that he hath begun a good work and you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. By, by this we, we mean to become perfect. Now, we do not mean to be completely without fault. Perfect in this sense means to come to a place of completion. Fathers, grandfathers, use your voice to help complete your child's life. Let's look at this again. The power of a father's voice, it directs you. Men, use your voice to give direction in your children's life. Number two, respects you. Dad, Grandpa, your voice can show respect and teach respect. The voice of the Father can correct you. Fathers, use your voice to guide and correct and discipline your children. The voice of God protects you. Dad, Grandpa, use your voice to instill a sense of protection in your children's lives. And the voice perfects you. Dad, Use your voice to help complete your child's life. Quite a challenge, isn't it? I'll tell you one more story, and then we'll be done. On this very first pew here, right in front of where Shirley is sitting, in fact, she can put her hand on a, put your, if you would please, there it is. She put her hand right on that plaque. There's a little plaque there. It says, in memory of Bob Wallace, who was our first deacon here at Bethel Baptist Church. He's been with the Lord for four and a half years. And as you are well aware, he was not my father, but he was my father-in-law. And I appreciated his part in my life and, and uh, another one of those men who I would give anything I could to hear his voice. I would give anything I could to sit and talk to him. I would love to be able to sit down with him and say, Pa, what do you think about what's happening in this world? And I can tell you exactly what he would say. He would say, the shadows are getting long. Jesus is coming soon. Jesus is coming soon. Give anything 
One more voice that we're looking forward to hearing. And that day may come soon, my friend. The Bible says that the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. You say, well, what does that mean? That means something, my friend, something like this. Jesus is not going to say, well, you know, I guess it's time for my children to come home. No, I don't think that's the way it's going to be at all. I think when Jesus comes for his own, he's going to say, come on home. Come on. We're going home. We're going home. The voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. That voice of the Lord Jesus will be so strong that the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up to meet the, in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And that's the next voice, the most powerful voice that you will ever hear. And you say, well, if I die, I'll miss the voice. Oh, no, 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 no. If you die, you'll be the first one to hear the voice. The dead in Christ shall rise first. When my father-in-law was living, especially after mom died in 07, he must have asked me 50 times, I wonder what people do in heaven. That's a good question. It's a normal question. I think he knows now. What do people do in heaven? Reunion? That's fine. That's good. Meeting loved ones? That's good. That's fine. It's all a part of it. It's all a beautiful part of the picture. But what people really do in heaven is they make their way up to the throne of God and they bow before the Lord Jesus and said, Thou alone are worthy of praise and glory and honor. And that will be our privilege too. That will be our privilege to stand in the presence of Jesus Christ and say, Thou alone are worthy. Not me, you. And the best part of Christian life today is for Christian people to say the same thing now. It's not about me. It's about him. It's not who I am. It's who he is. It's not about what I can do. It's about what he did. I don't know, I don't know how many times I've said this. God would be the only person who could tell you. There's only two kinds of religion in all the world. There are thousands of varieties. One of them is do. If you'll do this, if you'll do this, if you'll do this, the requirements are these, that's do. Hundreds, yea, even thousands of varieties. But the other religion is the religion of this book, and it's called done. Jesus paid it all. All to him I owe. Done. My friend, if you're here today and you're not a Christian, I have some good news for you. You can quit. You can stop. You can quit trying to work your way to heaven. The only way that we're ever saved, the only way you'll ever be saved, is if you look to Jesus and say, He died for me. After this service, you say, oh, I'd like to know more. After this service, our deacons will be in that conference room and they could chat with you and open the Bible and show you what God would have to say. And if God's working in your heart today, I would do it. If I were you, I would do it. Hold back, let everybody else go. You wander over there and meet some good people. If, if I can help a little bit later, I will as well. But we can help you. 
If God is working in your heart, something you need to pray about, uh, make sure you take advantage of that. Our deacons will be there and they'll be glad to pray with you, talk with you, give you, answer your questions, whatever it is and whatever it takes. Let's pray together. Father in heaven, Lord, perhaps on this day, there are some who haven't given their life to Christ. Lord, would you do a work in their life today and may they hear the voice of Jesus as he says, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest. Father, I pray that all of us have a good day today. And Father, if we have the opportunity to express our love or appreciation to our earthly father or earthly grandfather, Lord, I pray we'll do that today. Lord, I pray that we would encourage each other today in the things of God. Father, bless us now as we leave this place, for we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.